Hello, everybody. I'm super, super stoked today because I have my friend Janine from Turn the Page on, on with me. Normally, the tables are turned. Normally, I'm on with her, but I had her on with Catherine for the awesome Passions episode we did. And so I'm super, super, super excited to have her on with me. And I'll tell you guys a little, little bit of a secret. We've been chit chatting now for about 20 minutes because Janine is so easy to talk to. This is true with a lot of people I film with. Her. I'm like, actually, I think we should hit the record button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we just chit chat and chit chatting and before we get into the topic though i have to say something janine you said with our, our episode with Catherine about how you named your channel after a bob seger song he's yes. one of my favorites uh, when you said that i was like oh be still my heart i was <laughs> i am such a fan of his i hope he's good he's probably not but i hope he is because i'm yeah <laughs> Me too. I don't know. He's pretty, he's, he's, he's up there in age and I see him still on stage and he's still singing the, the turn the page song. So I think he is, I I'm hoping he is. I, and I truly believe in my heart, he didn't sell out. <laughs> yes. I want, yeah, there's a few of them. I mean, we had uh, what Charlie Daniels who passed away a while ago and I'm not a country music fan, but everybody who lives in Georgia knows every word to the devil came, went down to Georgia, that song. And um, he was a huge Mr. T supporter and, but he did pass away. And um, there are a few of them out there. I think that. But did he? Christ, but did he i don't know he's older so who knows he might have been like you know what abort mission y'all <laughs> have fun <laughs> i did i did my time See, yeah, have exactly but <laughs> i mean part of me has been like abort mission let's just go because we know that um i'm following the cassiopeian uh, forum and they're telling us we have more suffering to come and I believe mm. it because it's a collective yeah. thing that has to happen and you can't, you can't change without friction. So we have to have more friction to get the collect the collective to kind of turn the focus. And so, you know, I know we're looking at food situations here in the United States right now, which actually doesn't really scare me that much. Um, mm -mm. I think we've been kind of, we've known this for a while now. So it's just kind of like, let's just rip the bandaid off and get on with it. Um, and, and surprisingly human beings can live off of way less than we think we can. So, um, I, the one thing I do worry about, especially living in a city is the idea of it, it causing some violence, um, amongst people, if there's not enough food, that's the one thing. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we probably take a look at is, and I've been pushing this on my show is that everybody start your own garden, whether you, I, I, where I'm at, I'm in the Ozark, it's all rock. So I go out. And one of my, uh, somebody in my community say, take old tote bags, drill some holes in the bottom, fill it up with dirt and just start. Cause I've got a bunch of empty tote bags, you know, those big, whatever yeah. they are. And I'm just going to fill it up with dirt because I, you know, unless we, we have to build up these beds, you know, because we're, there's no black dirt or whatever dirt that is, uh, you, you know, good, good dirt, if you will. And then, um, non GMO seeds and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, this is a time this is a time of year to start building your own garden, taking back your power, taking uh, control. You don't rely on stores. Don't rely on anybody but yourself. You know, it's almost like we're, what uh, I believe is, is happening is that we, uh, you're right. There's going to be some friction. It's not going to be a smooth transition as everybody believes. And there's been warnings out there for, for so long. Um, but um, do what you need to do for your own uh, family. And it could be the way I think about it too, is it could be like going through um, a food so shortage for however long it's going to have to go. It could be a good detox for a lot of people too, you know, to get, cause we know that for most of our lives, we've been eating fake food really. And it's no fault of our own. It's just how, how it's happened. And so this could be a way to get you to detox as well. That, that happened to me the first time I went to India. Um, I actually was there for so long and there was some stuff I couldn't get. I felt that detox happen. And when I came back to America, I felt really good um, because it, some stuff had left my system. Of course it's back in there now, but, um, but you know, it, it, it could actually end up being a really positive thing. If, if we use it, uh, if we, it's like my friend Shanti from Aquarius rising Africa talks about this, taking the lead and making it to gold, taking the situation mm -hmm. and you and transmuting it and using it for something that's going to better you and better, better your world around you. And that's something like we were chit chatting and kind of what we were going to talk about today was this idea of consent too, because something we've been, I've been talking about a lot on my channel. Um, and I know Janine, we were just chit chatting about it is that um what we're what we're experiencing right now in the macro and in the micro is probably one of the most intense wars any generation of human beings has ever been through mm -hmm. and the dangerous part about this is normally we have this this conceptual idea of what what a battle looks like and that's not actually what's happening because it's the war for your soul 
And one of the things that I really don't like, and I've used this on my channel before, I'll admit that mostly for because of censorship is referring to this time as a movie because it's not a movie. We know that the probability, the Cassiopeians use the word probability of us coming out on top is really high, almost to the point where it's impossible for us not to win, but they still always use that word probability because anytime you rest on your laurels, that's when things go amok, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that worries me with what's going on is that so many people out there are saying, it's a movie, get your popcorn. And what happens is that takes you out of the reality of what's going on and it separates you from what's actually happening. And my understanding is in order for us to ascend is that we all have to do our own work. We all have to work on ourselves in order to shift that, to be, to be sovereign and not to rely on someone. And so that's something I've been trying to talk about on my channel. And of course that gets into the spiritual warfare of, of black magic. And to understand that this battle of light and dark, good and evil, isn't just happening with the elite. That's, that's far away from us. That's not in our, it's happening in our own backyards. Right. Right. I mean, I'm shocked at how many people actually do this actually. And I'm from the deep South. This crap's everywhere in the deep South. And I'm still <laughs> blown away by the fact that people actually do this. They actually get, they dabble with the spiritual war world in order to, to be selfish, you know, and I had a horrible experience. I'm still going through it. Um, Janine knows more about it from off camera and it, but it's taught me a lot. And that's why on my channel, I made a rule about tarot card reading where we're not going to read on people unless we have their consent. I don't care if they're a celebrity. I don't care if it's your neighbor, your husband, your son, your brother, your mother. I don't care if it's a sweet question. We're not going to do it because we have to respect those boundaries. And uh, Janine, you're in a, you read Akashic records. Can you mm -hmm. explain? I know you've on my channel before talked about this with Catherine, but can you just give a brief overview of what an Akashic record is? For people in case this is their first time seeing this show and they've never heard of this before. Yeah, sure. So basically it's it's based off of um a you know, so let me talk about the Kasha, right? We're we're talking about a uh, fifth element, uh we're talking about ether, if you will. And um, so you know, basically it's it's uh, tapping into that, if you will. And I do so the Akashic records. And I always put it to, because I was a computer programmer for 30 years, and I always put it as that analogy. Other, put, other people uh, put a little bit more of a spiritual spin on it. Um, but it, it's like a big computer system, right? And, and since we incarnated in, in all of our incarnations, there's a blueprint of us. Mm -hmm. um, every emotion, um, your thoughts, uh, just, uh, and it's not just of people, it's, it's everything on this planet, right? Everything outside of the planet. Um, everything has been recorded. And it's all based upon a tent, right? So if you, if you uh, and I tell everyone that uh, basically, um, uh, well, let me see, I kind of diverted a little bit. So this big computer system within there, there's uh, records, right? And there's files within the records and stuff like that. So when you ask a particular question and you've uh, actually put your heart into that, I can actually tap into the energies of that through, through the Akasha and then bring it back down and they call it the Akashic records. It's to me, it's just a label that uh, humans have put on it, if you will. And I, I kind of did a little bit of talk with this on another show about this. And I, I put my own perspective of uh, how, when I, when I, uh, I, I, I was taught how to do this. Okay. But um, when I, my energy started to, to grow and, and I became more in tuned with everything, um, I felt like I wanted to put myself into how I do my own reading. So it was outside of what I was told. And that's what everybody should do. You should be able to grow. Uh, if you are working one particular modality, add another modality, Cre be creative. That's what, you know, our creator teaches us to be creative. And so, um, you know, sometimes I'll bring in the archetypes. And, then, and the only reason why I do that, it's more grounding. Mm -hmm. it, people seem to understand that and they relate to it. And um, so I add a little bit of that into it also. But I'll get past lives, I'll get more uh, present uh, issues, and then I'll get future things if it need be. It, it all depends on the intent of the question. And, um, and I'll, I'll give people some healings uh, throughout the Akashic. Um, I hold the energy for them. Uh, a lot of times you'll see me like holding my hand like this. And a lot of other times I'm actually trying to release something for them um, with their permission. They've always given me permission. And I open up the records with a prayer and to, for me to stay uh, in the light of my highest good and their highest good. 
And um, it, it, it just, uh, it fills my heart. And what starts to happen with me is when I'm reading this stuff is my hands uh, in my, my crown shock will start to vibrate. That's how I know I'm right on target. And a lot of times um, I don't hear things. I see things that will come into my mind. It's almost symbols, if you will. And I, I have to translate that. So when I get those symbols, I sometimes, if I'm not sure what that is, I'll go back and I'll ask them a question. And then uh, a lot of times what I find is if I put that out there and they're like, I'm not sure what you're saying. If, uh, I'll know what the second question is and that information is flowing. And I actually, if most of the time now, I know what the three questions are. I do three questions within a certain amount of time. I put 30, 30 minutes as a, it's not, a, it's not dead set 30 minutes. Uh, because some information can be just so important to help this person shift. I'll give them homework and I'll actually tell them, um, you know, you, you have to work on this a little bit more. Um, and it's changing. It's changing everything at their cellular level if they choose to do that. And then there's other people that just want to know if some information at a very uh, high level. And they'll just, you know, uh, some will work with it. And some, some of it will say oh, that resonates with me. And, um, you know, that's all that they needed to hear. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been doing the Akashic records probably since for about 30 years now on and off. And I I've done a lot of other modalities, but going back to what you're originally saying about consent, the very first rule that I was always told is that you always have to ask permission. You just don't go and read on anybody. Now I had somebody in, in, in um, one of my, um, one day that, uh, did a, a chart on me and I was very devastated. I, I actually threw me. Because first of all, even even though that you may uh, have a gift uh, as a light worker, you always have to ask consent. You have to ask permission to even run that. You're already in my energy field, if you will, and I'm feeling. I felt very violated. Um, yeah. Even though it was it was coming from a, a probably a really good uh, um, place where that they wanted to do it for me. Because you know, I when I talk about my birthday, my birthday isn't one day. It could be a whole week. It could be a whole month. <laughs> it's just how I celebrate, right? But when she had put that out there in the community, I felt like, okay, I, I, I was so disturbed by it. And I was wondering, okay, what issue is this? I'm opening up my records. And all I was being told was that she didn't have consent to do this with you and just let her know that. And her response back, or I think it was her response back was, well, you shouldn't have told us what your birthday was. That to me was the way the liberals speak. Yeah. They will take something and spin it. And I put this in my channel. I'm not, you know, diverting anything. Um, I'm not even going to say who it is because I don't remember who it is. It doesn't matter. But when you actually go in and, and do that, you are violating someone. Don't forget, we're our energy. We're more energy than you think that the skin and body oh, and yeah. bones are. We, and once you actually are a light work and you work in it, your energy expands and we got to pull it back in and we have to protect ourselves. But when somebody goes and reads your energy without your consent, that's that's the universal laws. You're breaking the first law. Yeah. And I want to pause there for a second, too, because somebody asked me that because, um, you know, if this is the law, then how come someone stole your natal chart? Well, laws can be broken. And that's what the darkness does. A lot of times is breaks that law. And from my, like with karma, karma is literally just cause and effect. And there's always going to be a karmic response to every action taken. And I've said before on my channel, for the people who did this to me, like, I'm not so concerned about what's going to happen to you in this realm. I'm more concerned about the next one for you because the, and that's, and that's, um, and, and that, yeah. And, and you should be able that what the person that was basically gaslight you, you should be mm -hmm. able to say your birthday and not have to, I, I know people's birthdays never once have I thought, Oh, I'm going to go get yeah. them. I think, Oh, cool. Let me write this down so I can remember to text them next year. You know, like happy right. birthday. Let me mark it on my calendar so I can remember to tell, tell them a happy birthday text. Um, right. you know, and somebody asked me that once with mine, cause everybody knows my, my needle chart was stolen as well. And my needle chart was stolen in order to spell cast. I know, I know I have all the details now of what happened and it literally, um, it, I couldn't eat. Um, I got down below a hundred pounds. I had blood in my mouth in the morning. Like my, my soul essence was being sucked out of my body by using my natal chart. And somebody said, well, how did they get all your information? And I said, well, the state I was born in, if you know my, my legal name, which I use my legal name and you know, my birthday and you, you can get a copy of my birth certificate for $20. I've had well, to get of them. <laughs> let, let's take a look at this a little differently. Okay. So if we understand what's going on and how we've been lied to by 
and how they changed the constitution and sovereignty, you know, versus being a citizen. Everything is public. Everything is out there. Everybody has every information on everyone. So um, do we have to go back to the basics and, and remind people what was done to us? And then you're going to turn around and, 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 and continue being in the matrix and continue to do that type of stuff. Bryce, all that I could say is that I know who my true essences are and I abide by the law. I don't, I don't think I ever have to tell myself or question uh, the information. I'm, my ego will get in the way and I will tell it to get back. And I, I know when my ego is there mm -hmm. and that's just easing God out. I want to always stay in the light. Um, you know, I, especially with my husband, there's a lot of times where I, I, you know, I just put this all down and forget and he'll say, even say to me, well, you talked about that on your show. Like, show that to me. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just kind of it's kind of like um, you know we we are always being challenged to be in the light and be our true essence of who we are. Mm -hmm. But it you know I think people just need to remember that. And and I think that the ones um, that uh, it the, I like to manipulate people that uh, have a private agenda. I, I you know I always use that a private agenda. You're not in the light. So if you call yourself a light worker and um, you're, you know, you, you basically aren't practicing what you preach and, and we're human and we are going to step off this path from time to time. But just remember to get back onto the path, right? And, and that's basically it. We're here, we're, but we're here at a particular time. And if everybody knows what has gone on and what has been done to us, we, they, they made us slaves. And are you going to continue to stay in the light? Or are you going to continue to be in the matrix? That's, that's the, the God's truth. And if you don't remember what it's like to be in the light, um, you know, join a community. I, I built a community. I'm building a community now. And I would love to have you and any of your guests uh, come with that, even your friend Stephanie. And, and I would love to meet all of your friends because um, I'm looking for new friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if, if we get one perspective of, of somebody from what is it from South Africa or I mean my 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 people um that I talk to like uh, Lewis Henshaw, he's an up and coming and you I'd love to introduce you to him. He's uh he's writes music, he's very spiritual, he's in Spain. And these people, our world is so big right now. It's everybody that is out there and the ones that I am connected to, I believe are in the light and they practice what they preach. So, you know, all that I'm saying is that, uh, you know, when it comes to being spiritual, we, you know, and we're going to be with uh, talking about another human being, we better remember what the universal laws are. That's a whole show in, a, in itself. I studied the universal laws. Same, um, yeah. You know, back in the day. I mean, there's. I, I, do you teach that, Bryce? I, I'm not aware. I mean, you do. we don't. I well, in the philosophy of of, I usually try to stick to Patanjali's philosophy mostly, but a lot of that is self work. Um, you know, and so and so it kind of goes without say that that consent. If you're trying, if you're trying the big, if you're trying to heal yourself, you're not going to impede on somebody else's free will. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how I go. But yes, I've said, yeah, I've actually, I was telling one of my friends, I've actually done level one and level two Reiki attunements, but I don't really talk about that much because that's not my modality. I just mm -hmm. did it because my friend was offering the course. Oh, I used to babysit for her. And so she it was kind of a bartering and I just wanted to, I wanted to know it. Like I just wanted to, to have a deeper understanding of what it was. I didn't have any in intention of ever doing any healing because my thing was always yoga. But it was just for me, I mean, it, knowledge is power. It was just for me to understand it. And I respect Reiki healers so much because I understand a little bit of what their training is. And so, yeah, um, so yeah I've, I've done, there's a lot of, of training I've done. That I don't even talk about because it's not really me necessary. Too. It's just, it was just for my own development, really, you know? It, it is, it is, it is for your own development. And people will sit there and say, okay, I took all this. I, I was a Reiki master teacher. That's where I started. Reiki, it, you know, it was just one of those things, and, and uh, um, it, you know, it, I think everybody has the Midas touch if you really want to, um, you know, if you're, if you're taking the time out to learn all these different things, and you say, gosh, you know, I've got 15 cl different classes that I went through, take them all, make them your own protocol, it doesn't have to be, maybe it's what you've taken hasn't fit you, but fit you, but the Reiki stories about Reiki is the, it was my beginning taught me a lot about the universal laws. You can't just give away healing to people free and them expect it, right? That they'll, they'll respect you for giving it to them free. People have to uh, want to heal, right? 
And that's where I think Reiki started. I mean, I tell everybody I started with Reiki. I've done tuning forks. I've worked with crystals. I've read tarot cards for five years um, in little um, metaphysical stores, you know, uh, back where I used to live. Um, and the Kashuk Records was probably the last training that I took, and I decided I'm going to make it my own. I'm going to open up my own records. I'm going to channel what I need to channel. And I'll, to be honest with you, my readings are a lot different from other people's readings. I'm getting to the point where somebody says, well, what's my job? And that that's probably the number one thing that people would want to know, like, you know, especially if, if you've retired and you want to know what you do. They don't give me. They don't tell me. It's all free will. What we'll work on is a pattern or something that may be stopping you. It goes deep. Yeah, it really does. And it's all coming from a perspective of positivity and love. And we try to put things into balance. Yeah. That's kind of, it goes to what, that's kind of what we talk about with like in the Bhagavad Gita, they bring up this concept of like Dharma and, um, and, and it kind of this, this like balancing, I always think of the two of pentacles, the balance yes. between the Dharma and the free will and like, or in the tarot cards, you look at the, like the major arcana versus the minor, like we're going to have these major arcana moments in our life that we've agreed to, but our free will then is what do we do with that? Like, what right. are we then like, where do we go with that? And, um, and so it's so powerful and, and you're, 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 you know, it's, um, can I, I can, do, before, before you go on, can I just add to your thought there? What do we do with it is, um, you know, it's always in the mind that we want to know how are we going to figure things out? Right. But what I always tell people is take the mind and bring from the heart and let them meet together. There's your answer right then and there. And yeah. if you don't know, keep, keep practicing it, bring, bring the mind and the heart together. And sooner or later, you know, your, your body already is telling you what it is, right. And uh, get rid of the ego because it's stopping you from uh, actually uh, manifesting this. And if you see a vision, if you hear something, if you see something uh, that jumps out to you, that those are signs for you, you know, whatever it might be, those are things that are helping you along because you, you've uh, put it out to the universe and you're asking and you're praying on it. You have to be aware, right? We have to be more aware. It just doesn't happen in, in, in a, you know, I, I know that you, you meditate and all that, and that's good for you. Um, what I basically do, and, and it comes to me, if I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm getting information and if I fall back to sleep again and I wake up in the morning, I'm getting more information. But in my waking world, if I sit there and try to meditate, it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen for me. Well, actually, with meditation, I was telling us the true meditation, you don't want it to be channeling. You want to shut the mind down more to let, let it rest to find a one pointed, um, one pointed focus because the mind and that's, you know, it's so funny. I was talking to actually talking to Stephanie last night because we were talking about yoga and, um, and true traditional yoga and how everything is really comes back to you and yes. you know so you can say like like when you are um hurt by someone let's say you know somebody does something nasty to you and and it call okay i'll use i'll use my own example we, uh, my parents got divorced when i was in high school my my dad left you know and a lot of people have these these um abandonment issues because of so i know that i've struggled with abandonment okay well that abandonment really has nothing to do with my dad that's what caused the feeling in me. But if I'm going to heal myself, I'm not, I'm going to bring my dad out of it. He has his own mm -hmm. stuff. This is my karma now, this abandonment. So how am I, if I don't heal this and I did this for years, I'm going to continue to date bad men that do that. This is self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Cause I am holding on to this abandonment. So then I go, well, why am I afraid of abandonment? So then you have to go deeper. Why am I afraid of abandonment? What, what happens if I'm alone? Well, I, I can be alone. And then you go, but what am I afraid of? And usually most working with people for 15 years now and working with myself, I can tell you it always, most of the time comes down to you not feeling like you're enough. Mm -hmm. So abandonment, betrayal, all these things that hurt, anger, frustration, it always comes down to you not feeling like you're enough. And so then there's, we go back. there's two sides to, to, to abandonment could be, used for the, in the light. And then it is also the negative. And you, you know, I get the, I get the, the hits, if you will, sometime, just like, um, you know, uh, and certain things that even though that, that, uh, I call it the archetype of abandonment, right. Will, will come up a lot of times that archetype could come up, but it could be for the positive side, but I'm bringing it to you in a way that you can understand it. It's just kind of label on it. That's all mm -hmm. it has on yeah. it. Yeah. But, but you have to see, are you, are you on the positive side or are you on the negative side? And when you're on the negative side, it's always about you, right? 
Mm-hmm. It's it's and, and it's not what you you can do for the service of others. So if you've been if you've been feeling abandoned and you heal that, you would probably want to be able to tell other people. Yes. Yeah, and that's what I was saying last night. I was like, so if you get down to this, like, because hurt people hurt people, right? We are constantly, it, we're constantly, and that's one thing I know the other side doesn't want us to believe that science and spirituality are the same thing, but they really are the same thing. Science and spirituality are very similar. It's action, reaction, action, reaction. And so if you don't, it's like, it's like putting on the, the airplane mask. If you don't heal yourself first, right. subconsciously, you're going to be creating havoc because your, your, your subconscious is trying to heal this thing and you, but you're not letting it. And so it's going to keep, and the universe does this. You know, God, the universe doesn't care how long it takes you to learn a lesson because we're eternal beings anyway. So it's going to keep coming up until you. And what I tell students when we get to this like crux of, oh, you don't feel like, well, what if I told you you were enough? What if we reeled it back to this and said, hey, you are enough. And when you start to feel that within yourself, you then, it's like in the Yoga Sutra, Sri Swami Satyajananda in his commentary, he says, once you realize you have this Pratibha moment, this flash of illumination where you realize how special you are. Guess what happens? Mm-hmm. You see that in other people too. Right. You see right. And I life. And I tell, tell people all the time, and, and I don't like to call it a gift or anything like that, but uh, it, it's true. I will always see somebody's light before I see if they have a private agenda. And I love that aspect of always being in, in, in it's in love. You know, you're, I'm always in the, the love of the light. And then after time, you'll prove yourself to me. <laughs> and, then, and I'll say, okay, but I always give the benefit of the doubt because, and I've known this, Mike, my whole life, I would always just see, um, I would always see their light. I don't know how else to put it, but that's what I would always say. And um, I, I see the the positive side that they could truly be, but that's up to them to make the choice of which side that they want to go on. We're kind of talking about like, um, um, you know, two sides to to uh, to everything, right? So let's just say that, um, you, you know, you, you think that uh, sometimes you play the martyr, if you will. Martyr can also be on the positive side of things, right? It's just, it's just learning. Um, once you're a martyr, you kind of learn just to be of service uh, for various causes, right? It's a very positive thing. And obviously the martyr um, is the negative side is what we always think that somebody is. Oh, stop being a martyr, that type of thing, right? And that's just a, an addiction to, to like, um, I don't know, self-pity, if you will. And we don't want to be in the self-pity. We always want to be able to do it. We're here to do service for others. And I think that's what this whole thing is that we're going through right now is to uh, find um, uh, your creator or God um, and uh, find yourself, take your power back and be self-empowered. I've I had people say, well, what do you mean by power? Well, if you're seeking anything outside of yourself, you're giving your power away. And that could be on so many, so many different dynamics, so many different levels. Um, you know, and a good example is um, if you're addicted to, and that's an addiction, to following t- 10 different social media sites. And if you miss one, you, you, you feel like, oh, my God, I need that withdrawal. You know, I'm withdrawing for something. I have to go get that, fi- f- you know, fulfilled. What I would say to you is start your own s- social media site. You're taking your power back, right? It's just step up and, and do, you know, they don't all have the answers, but you have all the answers uh, you know, uh, within yourself. Yeah. And what you're basically, when you're following so many different, it could be 15, 20 of them, and you're just sitting at home and you're watching all this stuff and you agree or you like the person that you're actually following. Um, that means that we're mirror images of each other and you actually have all those essence that you're, of these people that you're watching inside of you. Yeah. It's nothing outside of you. Nothing. I love you said that. We talked about that, I think, with uh, Nick, Catherine, and I the other day when we were doing meditation. You know, we say a lot of times the things we can't stand in people is usually the qualities in ourself that's reflecting back on us that we need our triggers that we need to work on. But it's also true that what you love about somebody else is yourself reflected back at you as well. Right. It's your own. And, 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 you know, I I can talk about myself. You know, I don't want to always say that I'm in the light and something. When I was in corporate and I didn't belong there and I just, I didn't know any better. And that's where I made my living. I studied, you know, went to school for computer. Actually, I was self-taught in computers. I didn't get a, a degree. I just knew I was like a sponge and I would just absorb information. I was always wanting to learn. And I made it to the point um, where I couldn't make it anymore, right? It was just like, okay, spirit was saying, all right, we're done here, Janine. <laughs> but one of the things is I was extremely hard on other people. So that means how hard I was on myself. 
And that was because I was trying to achieve something. I was always in this thing where I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, climb this corporate ladder that just didn't exist. It was an illusion. It, you know, the, the ceiling for the women back in the day, because, you know, I, you know, um, you know, I, I went through that whole period of the 80s and 90s and everybody moved around and, you know, was chasing the dollar. I was one of those. I'm not going to lie to you, but I don't have to anymore because I really practice what I preach right now. And I watch things come to me. And as I put it out to the universe and it comes in different forms, it doesn't always come the way that you think it comes. We just have to be aware. And that what does what aware mean is being awake. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I love you say that too, because, um, you know, in the Hindu faith, this is one thing I really love about the Hindu faith. And when I talk about, when I say demons, I'm not, I'm not talking about actual entities because we know those do exist. We know that that's real. What I'm talking about is your own personal little, our own demons, yes. the darkness that we, this is shadow that we fall into sometimes in the Hindu faith, the demons are your teachers. And so sometimes you go through that kind of darkness because there it's, it's a, it's a learning. And then you can reflect and become aware. And so it gives you that information. And so, and so that, that is valuable. If you, if you're able to step back and like, that's invaluable, it's like something that it's treasure that now you have this information. Now you understand, you have more of an understanding. And, and I love that. I love you brought that up because that's a huge part. That's one thing I, and it's funny. So the, the, in traditional yoga, it's the teacher's job to kind of be, um, kind of be an asshole in the Mysore room sometimes <laughs> like you, cause you have to call people on their shit. Basically you have to yeah. say like, why are you avoiding this? This is your blind spot. No, skip back on your mat. But I always tell my students when teachers are hard on you, it's because they, they see something in you that you're not seeing for yourself mm -hmm. at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so they're trying to keep you back in, in, in your goal because the ego, the mind, the fragile ego will always try to do something. So it's not, it's not tested. You know, right. um, and, and so, and so, it, but, it, and I tell my students all the time, I'm like, I'm just as hard on myself as I am on you guys. I literally am yeah. um, because I have a teacher I have to answer to back in India, you know, so I, I, I do the same to myself. Um, and so, and so, but that doesn't mean if you're, if we're practicing yoga, there is a limit. I'm not talking about abuse. That's different. We're talking about a teacher who is just strict. So I want to put that disclaimer out there. We know what else somebody commented on my last episode I did, where I actually had my friend Stephanie read to see if my phone had been spell casted and my channel had been spell casted. Um, and, and the reason why I've said this before multiple times, the reason why I've ended up bringing this up on my channel is because I needed to, I wanted to expose it and I wanted people to understand that this is very real. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and also if someone's going through it, that, that they don't feel so alone, you know, mm -hmm. that they could be like, Oh my God, I don't feel crazy anymore. Or, or this is validating. And I had somebody comment. It really made me mad because they commented that by me talking about it, it's low vibration, which is victim shaming. It's victim mm. shaming. And I, and I, I replied back and I was like, I'm not in fear. I'm not afraid of this. Um, this has really the shit that's happened to me the last three and a half months has been hard and awful and gross, but it's changed me in a very positive way. It's made me stronger. And I'm putting this out there to, to let people know that this is real. And, and it kind of goes back to that person that did your chart, that gaslighting starts to happen where people don't want to, don't want, they, they, it's, it's a very strange dichotomy that happens um, where, where people start to not want to hear about this ugly stuff and they, then they're going to blame you instead of actually sitting with it. And, um, you know, and hopefully when we, when we start all start to work on ourselves, then we kind of move into a space where we're able to allow other people to have space as well, you know, mm -hmm. to, to stand up for what is right and to stand up for themselves. And that's what the, you know, the other side of this does the same thing. They, even though they claim they support victims, they really do victim shame a lot, you know, so it's all just this mental mind game. Um, yeah. so yeah. And so hopefully we're going to come into a space where we understand universal. If there's so Janine, if there's somebody out here listening and they've never heard of universal laws, is there a place they can go to research this a safe place? Do you know of, um, you know, I, I want to say, yeah, safe place is interesting. I had a book and, uh, Bryce, believe it or not, I took, when we moved out here, I took a bunch of books and I donated them to this little bookstore and now I'm like kicking myself, but, those were the things that taught me, you know, it, it's, you know, it's, I, I remember the thought I had is this is time for it to be in somebody else's hands. Yeah. And I'm sure that that is true. And I did that with crystals and stuff like that, but there, I, I was just going to kind of see if I could actually look up something. But um, I remember this book, I could see the, the, 
the picture on the cover of it, um, and I don't know if Telegram has anything uh, like that either that has about the universal laws, but I know there are books out there um, that, uh, you know, you can, you can find out there. Um, and if, if I could actually find it now, I would be, I would be, you know, love to share that with everyone. But, um, let me just see here. And I'll say while you're looking a good place to start too, if you want to start to not with the universal law, but start to like, look at your ego. If you're not looking, if you're, you know, the yoga sutras are great, but if that's not for you, um, Mary Magdalene's gospel, the, some of these missing gospels from the Bible, of course, that's why they took these gospels out of the Bible. They didn't want us to know this stuff, <laughs> this self, self empowering stuff. Um, but, uh, the book I'm reading on my channel, Megan Watterson's the Magdalene reveal, because she breaks down the seven powers or the seven clashes, the seven obstacles of the ego. And when we start to look at that and break down, then you start to understand why, you know, universal law exists to begin with. Um, and, and I want to say too, like with human beings, I'm glad you brought up too about the whole, like, you know, and I said this with Catherine yesterday, and we we're going over the bite model, like human beings, we're, we, we kind of move in shades of gray in our life, mm -hmm. you know? And if you realize that you screwed up, that you did something without asking somebody's permission, it does not mean that you're now damned to hell. That's not what that means. Yeah. You just course correct. No. You just yes. Uh, before this happened to me on my channel, we were pulling tarot cards on people that we didn't have consent for. And I've admitted that. And, but this experience taught me that lesson. And now we're course correcting. And so I don't want anybody to be freaked out by that. That's why we learn and grow. We, we, we learn how to change ourselves. So. Um, I think that actually where I was studying a lot of this too, is um, I studied the course in miracles uh, for a brief period of time. Um, and that was with Marianne Williamson back in the day before she wanted to go into politics. <laughs> and, oh, really? uh, yeah. So, but Marianne Williamson, she, um, uh, was a huge advocate. It was in the course of miracles. And then they have like these workbooks and stuff like that. I think that's, you know, cause I, I had a Reiki master teacher that I would talk to and she would always talk to me about the universal laws. I'm like, where is this book you speak of? <laughs> I so I always it. wanted to know, and I think I was pointed to the Course in Miracles, and um, you know it's it's a it's a great big uh, uh, blue book, if you will. A lot of you study. It has um, uh, Unity churches that uh, used to teach this a long time ago. They were spiritual; they weren't anything to be affiliated with religion whatsoever. Yeah. And um, and so it's a self study spiritual thought system, um, and it's it's kind of heavy. And also, too, there are also are archetypes out there for you to, to find, too. There's books if you want to know what, you know, what does she mean by these archetypes? So you can actually read all the stuff up. And if you resonate with one, that's one that you, there's, I studied 70 archetypes. And um, one thing that I would like to do is if uh, you're familiar with anyone that does, um, 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 what do you call it, uh, astrology charts? Astrology yeah. is kind of built up where uh, uh, they can actually... Uh, there's some people out there that will do archetypes with that too. Um, that's where I think I got my idea is that, um, so even tarot cards, if you will, they have the archetypes in them. Certain decks do, not all of them, but um, so that there's, they're all, everything is symbolic, right? And so, uh, you know, I think I would say that if you wanted to do some of the self-studying, um, you know, that that's where I would start. Course in Miracles is a heavy book, though. It is really heavy. Um, I don't use it as a reading book. You use it as, um, you know, where you open it up, and that's probably the lesson that you need to learn. Um, I don't hear about that too much anymore, uh, The Course in Miracles. It's but so uh, the, uh, you bring that up to Janine, though, um, because I was actually thinking about doing that book um, on my channel, The Course in Miracles. Because I, oh my God. Because I'm kind of the same as you. I've used, I've gone back and forth with it in my life, and I've, Certain sections have like appeared when they needed to appear. Um, and I've, I've considered it, I've, but I know it's a very heavy, heavy book, but I've considered doing like a, cause yeah, we read through books on my channel. I thought maybe this would be a good one, especially for people who are coming out of like a more fundamentalist Christian background to kind yes. of come into a more spiritually based. I think the Cor a Course in Miracles is something that is a good bridge, but another, this is something that I also talk about a lot on my, have you, are you familiar with the law of one, the raw material? I am. I've actually followed that on telegram. It, this is, this information really helped me understand what's happening right now in our world. And there's lots of different books on, like they have multiple, multiple books, um, but definitely start obviously with the, the book, the first book. And it goes through the different densities of, of, cause we're in a really heavy density. If you guys haven't figured it out now, 
earth is like the heaviest density. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's, it's shocker, right? Um, and so we're, we're in a third density body and we're living in a third density world. And one of the laws of third density is polarity, mm -hmm. good and bad. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and when the soul is old enough, then at a certain point, the soul will be now they call it harvesting. I always say this sounds like a horror movie, but that's just the word that they use is harvesting. The soul is eligible to be harvest. And that means that it can come up to a fourth density planet positive because at fourth density, it splits either positive or negative. Uh, so it's it, the positive is service to others and the negative is service to self. So and to be a uh, service to self, you got to be real service to self, which is why those people do what they do. If you, you guys know what we're talking about. So basically right now, what's happening is on earth and the raw material, the law of one goes through this is that, um, we are in a very unique situation because not only are humans ascending, but earth herself is also ascending. So the earth is also mm -hmm. changing from a third density planet to a fourth density. The probability is positive planet. Um, and obviously the negative ones are trying to hijack that to make it a fourth density negative. Now what that, what raw also talks about too. And I think a lot of us are this way is that a lot of us came down to the earth during this time as what, what they call wanderers. So meaning that our souls were already like sixth density or higher fifth density. And we volunteered to come back to earth at this time, going through the veil of amnesia to help earth and help the the souls that have never ascended that are going to ascend to help them push it through um, like birthing a baby. And so it's really fascinating to, and this was written back. And I think what, like, God, seventies, maybe eighties. I can't remember when they were writing these books, but it really, and the whole, and the woman who channeled this raw was a group, a six density group that was giving the information. And the woman who channeled this was a huge Christian. And still was a Christian until the day she passed away. And so that's what I tell people, like this material can be merged with whatever religion you're following, because it's just it's just a, a spiritual philosophy. But it makes the most sense to me. It really makes sense um, as to what's happening right now. We know that the earth is also pushing back. You know, we know that a lot of these um, these deeds that have been done on Mother Earth are also being stopped as well now because Earth herself and, out of, and apparently out of all, I'm, I'm serious, like the law of one talks about this out of all the third density planets, Earth is literally hell. Like it is the hardest one to come live on. Like other third there's density been so planets. Many, there's there's so been many, so many species so many. here. I know. Other third density planets are like, now we're good. <laughs> Earth, <laughs> Earth is that planet when they say the, the aliens lock their doors when they fly by Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> So they're like, eh, lock the door, um, the gangster planet. And, but when you, but, but when you start to read and what too, I've learned from some of the missing books, the ap apocryphon books, which really make it interesting is that we talk about being of the light. Well, people who are of the light actually carry that spark within them. And that's, and that's the dark entities to me to self. And that's why they feed off, off of us physically and energetically. And so you start, it starts to make, you start to understand it more. And when you understand it more, you have that knowledge and knowledge is power. Then you can take accountability. Then you understand that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And it helps to keep yourself in alignment. And if we're all, if we all keep ourself, do a checklist for ourselves every day, then we can turn this ship around so fast, you know? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a lot of, um, the way I look at it is if you know that something's off, then do the alignment, right? We, I mean, it's, it's easy to always get in, into a routine of mundane stuff, that day-to-day -day stuff that we need to do. But if you are real serious about taking your power back, that's one of the things you do is the check and make sure uh, you're in it. But you have to get educated. And Bryce, I just wanted to go back to that Course in Miracle. If you are thinking of doing that, I would love that to be introduced by you and in, into my community. Um, cool. You know, let's, you could do that. Um, and then if you if you start it like on your channel, what I, my, my community is uh, on Patreon. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to, to kind of let you know that, too. So what I'm doing is I'm just telling anybody, just give a little bit of money because it's going to then go. It's on Patreon. I'm not even sure if I'm doing it right. So I'm not familiar with Patreon. And then I want to pull everyone in Zoom. I want to see their faces. I want to know yeah. who they are. Give them virtual 
hugs, that kind of thing. But I need to have the funding to, to be able to, if I had 500 people on there, if right. you will. Right. Um, so, but the Course in Miracles, uh, I think would be a really good introduction into that. And then if you do start that, the, if you know, those courses, if you do go through with it, the people who take it and follow you, um, you know, however that you're going to present it and you, is, is, is you are going to be a teacher for them. That's just a thought. Oh, um, and um, So you guys watching right now, put down in the description box below if that's something you guys would be interested in doing. Because as I tell my, I mean, I've, I've, I'm familiar. I've, like I've said with you, the Course in Miracles, that, that course, that book has kind of come in and out of my life throughout my life. So, Me too. Um, so I am familiar with it with a lot, some of the books that I've been covering. I'm I it's, it's literally us on the channel, just reading it together. But it, with that being said, I would love to do like a book club and do that and do a zoom because I, well, I say this on my channel a lot and I mean it. Like I want to hear people's opinions. I want right. to, I don't want to just sit up on my video and read it and give you my opinion. And that's that I want to hear if you, what you think as well. And so that would be awesome. I would love mm -hmm. to do that with you guys, Janine. That would be awesome. So yeah, let us know in the comment section below guys, because it's, a, it's an incredible, like the times that the course, a course of miracle has come into my life. The message has been so actually, and I can't remember which I used to have business cards like 10 years ago. And on it was a quote from A Course in Miracles. And I cannot remember for the life of me which one it was. But um, but it, it's because it's so impactful. Like when it comes into your life, it's like, yes, it's it's like God saying, like hitting you on the head going, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, so Bryce, if we're talking about it, you know that they want us to do this. And somehow we'll collaborate, um, you know, um, do you do you have Patreon where you would open that I up to do, your? I do have Patreon. I ha I do my Patreons just for member support. Um, but we could probably collab if you want. I mean, I'll have to learn that my so my Patreon got blocked a couple months too. Uh, and Janine knows poor Janine. She's one of the numbers that gets blocked for me a lot. It's like the two <laughs> swords with all this. I don't know why your number, Janine, is one that they like don't like me because you've texted me so many times and I've missed it and emails and it's just. It made me feel better when I did get confirmation that it was spell casting, but um, but if we have to send a carrier pigeon, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah. I mean, um, uh, Catherine even does it for people that are out of country that WhatsApp, and and I've started doing that now with because everyone that I have on my show is is out of the country. That's why I told I, I told my I teased my husband and said I'm so worldly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my WhatsApp got blocked. It, it, they, I stopped being able to use my WhatsApp and then I got on oh. Signal. And so sometimes I'm able to use Signal, um, but it did make me feel better when it was confirmed that it's not anything I've done. It's literally these, and I know who they are. I know who the people are doing this, um, are trying to like isolate me from, from, you know. See, but you, you, can, can I just add a little bit to that? You know, that it amazes me. So we're all light workers and we all have this knowing and they're still going to try to pull this crap. You know what I'm saying? Don't they know that we know? <laughs> I think they know. I think they know. I know. I think they, they know for sure. I know they've made it very obvious what's happening. And, yeah. um, you know, especially when my channel gets, they attend to chat multiple times a month. I'll get emails from, uh, from Google saying that somebody tried to sign into your channel with your old password and only one other person had that password, but it's not, I know it's not that person doing it. I know 100%. He is completely innocent. I 100% I know that's, but somebody else that's in this coven has that now. And I know, you know, and it tells me it, it you know, that's the thing is it's, it, I kind of laugh at their, they're kind of dumb because Google tells you like, <laughs> well, that's what they say about the deep, the, the deep state, right? The families, they keep doing the inbreeding, you know, they think they're, the, you know, they, the more inbreeding that they do, the dumber that they get. Come on, people. <laughs> you, know, I'm like, you realize that I actually Google like gives you a location of where this, and it's in Canada, <laughs> like not in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's kind yeah. of it's annoying. Every time it happens, I have to go through and like reset stuff on YouTube. It's annoying, but I'm trying to laugh about it because it just person either. They're just so arrogant that they think that, but you know, but that's the thing too. And I, and we're going back to the law of one is that when we do finally sw switch people who are 100% service to self and knowingly doing this and not course correcting that behavior won't be able to move forward with us that won't it just won't be able to happen you know and so and so i know there's going to be a finale and and i actually at this point with everything that's happened i feel very calm um i i know that god is using this god, what the devil will make for bad god will use for good and i know i'm strong enough to take it and i know that that's why i'm taking it because i'm strong enough to take it and they're not going to break me uh, but poor janine bless her heart <laughs> she's one of the ones that 
<laughs> We're going to have to get one of those cans with a string, Janine, from Arkansas to Georgia. So. You know sign language? <laughs> no, I, I know mudras, but <laughs> I know. I'll just, I'll just start whistling into the ether. Yeah. We're going to have to work. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's exactly what it is. You know, I'll just tap into the Akashic. Oh, Bryce, come on, I'm meeting now. Leave me alone. <laughs> So, but I honestly, I don't think, and and it's kind of like, I see this with the deep state as well. It's like the closer um, things come to combusting for the bad guys, the wilder they get. It's like, they don't even care anymore who sees what they're doing. It's just like a wild animal pushed up in a corner and it, it's thinking illogically. So um, I think their madness, their reign of madness is almost up. Um, and I'll just keep, I'll just keep every time I get a, a, Every time this thing keeps trying to uh, crack into break into my uh, channel from Canada, every time, you know, and I don't know if you saw my, my AdSense um, is every time I post a video, I lose $200. So somebody's skimming my money from AdSense. Oh, well, oh, wow. I'll, no, you putting videos up. You're not going to stop me. Um, and if right. you're money, it's going to so be right. What I, what I actually see is what, what's, what's going on with you at a personal level is what's going on with us, you know, uh, with the deep state, if I can even say that, I don't know where this is going to be recorded, but it's, it's very much the same across the board, right? It's, it's almost like, um, they, there was uh, spells put on us. They kept us in the matrix. They lied to us. They changed the constitution, all this stuff, you know, and, and, and that just tells me, uh, something, um, you know, why, why did you have to experience this at, at a personal level? I think it was so that you can go deep inside, inside of you because, um, you know, we all need to um, have that awareness that there are things like that out there, even though we're in this loving spiritual community of light workers. Some of them you think are light and some of them may not be. And I'm not saying that anybody is or isn't. So ple people, please don't read anything into that. All I'm saying is that we're not perfect. We're human beings here right now. And we all have lessons to learn, um, you know, and we're, we're learning them um, at a, uh, uh, I don't know, at a global level, if you will, worldwide, the same thing. And then each one of us have our own individual levels. So there was some awareness that Bryce uh, needed to um, bring into her life at this time. And it could have been, it could have just been what she agreed to when she signed up to do this, to be here. And uh, so we all have our own, um, our own, uh, I don't know what the word is, but we all have our own things that we have to deal with. And I know I do. Um, and um, I, I try to be conscious of it. And a lot of times um, if I feel like that, I'm not even being my own self that there, you know, I need, I need to decompress, yeah. you know? Um, I, so there's I just, there's, I've dealt with uh, uh, entity attacks my whole life. Um, so this is not, so it's, it, this is the worst it's ever been. Um, but I do know that this is something I agreed to have happen. I do know that. And that empowers me because, and I, and I do know that, and, and the funny thing is, is Janine, you're right. Because before all of this happened, I was confident. But because of this, I have grown stronger. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's been, it's actually been, you know, at the end of the, I, I've said this before, thank you to the people who are doing this. Thank you. Right. I thank you because you have unlocked a strength in me that I didn't actually know I had. Right. Um, and that, and that is something that's, it's, it's not been comfortable. It's not been fun, but a year from now, I'm going to be so grateful. I went through this. Yes, you are. Yes, you, know. you are. It, 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 you're just expanding more and more and more. And that's what we all need to do. We're confined in these little um, human bodies of ours. But at nighttime, we go out and we do our work. But that's what the whole, that's what we're here for is to ex get into our own and expand and also know how powerful that we all are. So if Bryce didn't go through this um, with you um, on a very personal level, how would you have even learned about this outside of it? Because when a lot of people think that they're within the light and they're within light workers, everything is pushing up daisies, right? It's all beautiful and it's all loving. Everything, everything has a, a, a positive side and a negative side or a shadow side. I don't like to always say negative. So let's just take a, one more thing is just, just take a, a mystic, right? A mystic is more um, in the realms of uh, being unite, uh, very intimate with the divine, right? So what would the shadow side of it being is you're delusional about the divine. Yeah. So our, you know, when we talk about light workers and mystics, which you know, there's, there's the good and the bad. And I hate saying bad. Um, 
the, the shadow side of it, if you will. So we are all mystics in our own, but you guys pick a side. We've been hearing that so long from 107. Pick a side. Yeah. You know, is it, is it Republican? Is it, is it red? Or is it blue? Is it God or is it devil? You know, that type of thing. We're all here to pick a side, no matter what uh, dynamic level that we're talking about. And I think for me too, with um, growing up in the, in the South, you know, and I, and I say this, I, I have to be careful about this because I don't want this to come out wrong, but because for the most part, women are respected in the South, but growing up in a society where you were expected to like go to college to meet your husband and then get married and have kids. And, you know, so as a woman, I've always kind of struggled with that, where my power is because I've mm -hmm. taken a very different path. I've traveled, I've really taken a very different path than what I was raised to take. And I think this experience, um, you know, it, it, it didn't, it didn't give, it was, it was humbling for my ego, but it gave me understanding that, that the feminine is very powerful and very strong. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I hope I'm saying that right, because mm -hmm. we're constantly trying to undo these. Yeah, absolutely. And there is that delusional, the delusional side with the spiritual versus the um, it's, it's like powerful, but humble when you're actually work there, there's humility, but there's power there. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? You know, instead of the, yeah, you are. So it's kind of like, a, you know, going back to what I was saying, you got a delusional rapport with the divine and what that might be. And I hear that a lot from a lot of different people like, um, um, you know, so it's, you go to multiple readers and you get a lot of different information. Why is that? Are they just telling you something to feed your ego or are they telling you something that, you know what I'm saying? You guys, you really you know, take a look at that. I don't even, if somebody uh, wants to know like who they were in their past life, I don't tell them who they were. I go back and I, I take a look. What was the lesson? What was the pattern? What are we looking at? Yeah. You know, did they bring it here in this lifetime? Cause a lot of times you can do the, take that timeline and bring it in here because you chose to do that. Yeah. I don't look at, uh, you know, everybody was not the, the queen of Sheba, right? It, it's, it's more or less, what are you, what, what are you uh, here? And when people say, what is my purpose? It is so deep. When you ask that question, I'm not even going to tell you that it's a job because if, you know, if you want to come to me for a Kashuk record reading at the spiritual level, that's what I'm going to give you. Yeah. I love that you said that. I, cause that is a huge thing in yoga. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter I, who you were in a past life. Doesn't matter. No, that's just a label. But you, you can bring some of those uh, traits yeah. with you. And, and it's because you agreed to do that. There's a contract that we all have. I, I don't even, you know, I, I hear a lot of people say that it's a contract, but it's just something that we agreed to. When we, you know, let's just say we're like, okay, we passed away, we go up there and then we say, you want to come back down. You have a choice there too, whether or not you want to come, you know, come back into a body or whatever. And you say, yeah, I want to experience this. This is what I came here to experience. Yes. And absolutely. will I learn from that? Yes. And, yeah. and so, so how that experience is played out is, is up to you. You pick the environment, you pick the family, you picked your mom and dad, so on and so, so forth. You picked it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, because the identity of who you were, it doesn't matter at all because it's just a part you played. What matters is the work. What matters is the emotion. What matters is that residual energy. It doesn't matter. Like if you were, um, a child starving in Africa or, you know, the queen of England it, that, that, but what was the lesson that you did? I say this because it, yeah, yeah. you are repeating that. Yeah. Things. So if you, if you were, let's say you were very powerful and you misused your power, you're going to come back here to learn what it's like not to have any power and struggle, but you know, you feel it, you sense it. You say, I can't get to it. You know, why is it? Okay, well, let's take a look at it. You know, uh, you know, you know, there's the, the positive side and the shadow side. And, you know, that's the work that I do with you. It's, it's, it, you know, it's not a reading to build up your ego to say, yeah, you, you, uh, you were a knight in shining armor somewhere, you know? I don't even, I know, I know I have tapped tarot cards and all that kind of stuff and dousing material. I don't even like reading for my, like I have one person that will pull for me. Now I'll study other tarot card readers just to watch how they do it. But I don't even read for myself because I don't want to change an outcome because of my ego. You know, I want to see what, what the divine really wants to tell me whether I want to hear it or not. And so I right. totally get that. And I think when you can, because I have known friends that will go from reader to reader to reader to reader to reader, to reader until they find the one that says what they want to hear. And then that's their reader. And then the minute mm -hmm. that reader starts saying so they don't want to hear, they go back into reader to reader. To, you know, it's like it's it's like it's an addiction. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. At that point, if you're getting at that point, I'd be like, stop getting some readings for a while and just go live. Just go, you know. Yes. So, yeah. so, well, and I that, 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 
That's true, too, because, we, you know, <clears throat> what is it that you're looking outside yourself that somebody can tell you, you know? Um, so that's that's why I joined the community and, and uh, or I built the community. I'm starting to build this community. And I know there's a lot of other people that are wanting to build a community. But uh, we need to, we, we, uh, we've been separated, we've been divided for so long, and we're always, there's this one, I, I, you know, I hate to say this, but there's one person in the family that is awake. Let's get a bunch of people together and let them talk to each other, let them share their experiences. That's all that this is about. Um, and if you can teach somebody else one thing or share, somebody, share something with somebody who really needs to hear it, or you don't, many, you don't even have to be aware that what you have said, how it affected somebody. It's just, it's just knowing that you, you know, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I want to, Janine, I want to have you come back on with my friend, Stephanie, because I think you guys would be really interesting um, doing a show together because she's, you guys know Stephanie. She comes on my show a lot, and she definitely. Yes, I do. I've seen her. I've seen her on here. Unfortunately, I don't get a chance to watch everybody, um, but I am slowing down with a lot of interviews, and I love coming on other shows now. Um, so I, I want to thank you so much, and I feel so blessed. And Christ, the very first time I saw you, and I, I know um, I always say this to you, but I saw your light, and it was just so upright. And um, unfortunately, you had to go through some things. You put your back. I mean, you're you're glowing more. You're you're more vibrant, and that's what happens. You know, when, when something burns down, it grows back even more beautiful than ever. And you have you have done that. And um, you you know what's even more powerful is you shared it with so many people out there. Not a lot of people could have done that. You've opened yourself up, but yet at the same time you've shared your pain, and uh, that's just not not a lot of people can do that. Awesome. Um, and just know that just stay in that light all the time because, um, you know, you are protected and um, whatever is going on, it's just like us trying to say, oh, gosh, I wish that, you know, the deep state would go away. They went away. They're gone. 13 families can't breed anymore. And uh, other things, other minions will start to fall away also because we're doing the work we came here to do. Well, I appreciate that, Janine. I know, um, you know, the more your heart breaks, the more the light can come in. Mm -hmm. And so um, I appreciate that because this has been very heartbreaking. And there are people that I lost in this process that I really miss and I still really care about. Um, but we'll see. And that's the same with everybody who's all lost family from this stuff, right? And they're lonely and they want to meet other people. You are just um, a beacon of light for everyone on so many different levels. Um, you know, your loss is... is, is um, somebody else's loss that they can relate to. And um, I, I, all that I want to say is we, we take this and we embrace it and we move on. And that's what you have done. And everybody, we are moving on. We're joining the communities. We're finding our power. If you don't know how to find your power, if you don't understand what that means, get with like minds and you'll find that out. And I, I look so forward to coming on with you again uh, next week or whenever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Spirit Let's told me to slow down on my interviews and uh, I'm doing it. <laughs> Well, we'll get you out there. Well, I feel the same about you, Janine. You are such a, a, a breath of fresh air. You're, I let you're so calm. And that's something that I wish I could be more of is because I'm more like, Ooh. but you're so <laughs> you're able to like, I mean, I think you could really run the country, Janine, because you're just so like, you have such a strong, I'm like, she, she could run the country. So <laughs> I, I just want everybody to run themselves, really. Know, that, right? That's 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 what I want. I want everyone to be able to see their own power. But that's why you could run the country because you'd be like, you gotta <laughs> deal with this yourself. You just know, <laughs> no. You, you oh oh my god! I even say that to my husband. Did you not think this through? <laughs> Do you have any questions on this? <laughs> that poor oh, man. man. Oh man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, one day soon, I, I keep saying this, but I really feel like it's true. One day soon, we'll all be able to be together in person. You know, and maybe if not, Janine, we live close together. And my friend, have you met my friend Liz TikTok from tic the TikTok? I've TikTok? had her on my show. I think I had her on three or four times. Yes. Amazing. She's She's right between us. So we could even okay. I know, I told Catherine that one day she should come over and we could do like a tour of the coffee talks and we can bring you and Liz along and just celebrate <laughs> with everybody over here in the United yeah. States and go from, well, some states we might not be able to go into because of whatever's happening. You guys, that's nothing personal, but, um, but for the states that are more like opening than sure, you know, so I, I'm looking forward to that day to be able to like, to see everybody in, in person and not just 
the other content creators, but also our, our subscribers and our viewers as well. Because I do, I really, when I say we're all just walking each other home, I, I mean it. Like all the people that watch our shows, you're part of these platforms too. Even though our faces are on these platforms, you guys are part of this too. And I mean that. Like the people that watch my channel, that constantly comment, that constantly giving you're a part of esoteric Atlanta you're a part of turn the page you know we wouldn't exist without you and we all need each other you know we're all mm -hmm. walking with our home in this and so I'm looking forward to the day where we can all be celebrating in the streets and having mm -hmm. our and having our uh, I know we we're talking about getting some drinks tonight and and I even said people are like you can't drink because of spirits listen no that's your own work I <laughs> I'm fine. I, I mean, I don't drink that much, but I'm a happy drunk. So, so I will have my ties with you. And this is over, Janine. And we'll dance in the street. So. You, you betcha. You know, I make sure that I don't have alcohol when I do readings because I've got this. Maybe somebody told me at one time, but well, I'll tell you, my readings are over with. My day is over with. As soon as, well, I, I think I'm going to still do the show with Lewis. Um, but uh yeah, it's just like okay, we still have to we, we we still have to celebrate, right? We still have to be with friends and camaraderie, and you know, just you know, be whatever. But I I just don't think it's a job, you guys. I really I, I really keep emphasizing it's not a job. Um, it's just who we are, Dharma. right? It's it's our it's a dharma. It's what, it's what we can do. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, I'm a rum girl. I love my rum. I love my rum. So does my husband. Oh, he really? loves his rum. Yeah. He, he's got a signature drink, and that's the only thing he drinks. I'm always like, what's that foo-foo drink? Oh, what is that? Oh, that looks pretty. I want the umbrella. <laughs> I'll do beer, too. Like, if beer is all that's there, I'll, I'll do beer. Beer just makes me feel... Yeah. Well, I, do, I do beer. I do the Coronas uh, in the summertime when we're out on our boat, and I love it. But uh, other times, I, I it's, it's something about drinking beer in the sun and on the water. I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, I to, I'm, I'm a cheap date because I like PBR too. And PBR is like the cheapest beer you can buy. I'm, I'm still like that 22 year old college student. We're like, I'll get a PBR. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah. So I get it. The only alcohol I really don't like is tequila because I had a really bad experience. I didn't get it. It just, I don't remember that yeah. night. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. That, that's like my niece she's like 23 so she started she really didn't drink at 21 i think she started like a, a year ago or something and she just came up to me and says auntie do you know what a long island iced tea is i said oh my god i used to drink those i used to love them and she goes i just thought it was a tea <laughs> Like, oh, you've got so much to learn. that's so i love that innocence though or like mike's hard lemonade i thought this was just lemonade <laughs> so oh i know sure. but I, before we go i just wanted to let everyone know if you are interested in in the patreon it's ttp uh reading one and just search for it that way and you'll find it and uh, i think bryce we're, we're gonna do good at this yeah. community send me, thing. Send me the link and i'll put it in the description box so they can just click to it okay um, and, and i think the the first person i'm actually having is Catherine edwards on the 28th if she's still going to be available i know she's she's got so many everybody is like uh, uh reinventing their platforms right now right yeah, that's great. It's we need the change. We need the change. Yeah. But yes, uh, Bryce, we'll we'll talk. We'll talk offline about that. And I think it'll be just see what your your uh, your viewers um, say about it. If they want to, you know, get do the thumbs up on the. Of course um, it yeah, I'm gonna order. I'm gonna sure. order a copy of the book because I know I probably have one somewhere. But I'm just gonna order a new copy right now when we get off. Um, yeah, go ahead and get it because I know I I already know that people are gonna want to do it. So and it is literally it's 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 heavy, but we can do heavy. <laughs> We can do it. Yeah, it. it is heavy. And I remember that. And, and I worked and worked and worked. And you know what? I almost forgot that I did all that work. But when, you know, I got here for, for a particular reason, right? It was all that work. <laughs> it just integrates into you. Like it integrates, integrates. Yeah. So I, I have no doubt that our viewers can totally, as when a, I had a teacher once that whenever I was uh, stuck on like a really hard posture, the teacher would say, this is easy for you. Just flip it and be like, this is easy for you. Just mm -hmm. this easy. And so I'm going to say that to you guys, even with hard material, this is easy for you. You've got this. You got mm -hmm. this. If it's calling yeah. out, you would do it. It's easy for you. You got this. So there's a workbook too, Bryce. I just wanted to remind you of that. The oh, workbook right. for the Course in Miracles. Yeah. I'll, I'll order both of them so I can look at the material and then um, we'll see what the viewers say and then we'll figure out a time to start it and we'll put it out there on our channel. So you bet. Awesome. All right. great. Well, Thank you so much. And God bless. I'm going to put links to her. If you guys have been living under a rock and don't know who Janine is, <laughs> I'm sure most of you do, and I'm sure most of you follow her, but I will go ahead and put links to her page as well in the description box, as well as the Patreon. I'll get that from you and put it in the description box as well so that you can start following, because you have so many, 
so many amazing people come on your show. And so, and now, and now you're being interviewed, which is awesome. So I know I, <laughs> so, I like it. it takes the stress off of me. <laughs> yeah, right. 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 Exactly. So, all right, guys, well, we love each and every one of you. Thank you for watching and we will have a wonderful weekend. It's starting to get really nice down here in the South. So go spend time at, make sure you spend some time outside, enjoy mm -hmm. nature and um, know that the best is yet to come. We're all in this together and we are all walking each other home. All right. Uh -huh. Have a wonderful day guys. Bye. Bye now.